Hi, I'm Anthony Gosha, consultant neurosurgeon and founder of the Spine MDT. And today's video is about cervical myelopathy, what it is, how to diagnose it, and how to treat it. Well, myelopathy means the impairment of the function of your spinal cord, and cervical is the neck area of the spine. To explain it, let's go over the anatomy um, using this MRI scan of the spine. So this is a slice through the middle of the body, the front, the back, and you can see the silhouette here. There's the front of the neck, the chin, the mouth, the nose. Here's the back of the head and neck. Here you can see the back of the brain. And then this whole unit here, this whole segment is the cervical spine. It's made up of a stack of cylindrical blocks of bones called vertebral bodies. Each block of bone has an arch on the back. Um, so if you stack these up together, you form a tunnel in the middle called the spinal canal that contains and protects this gray structure called the spinal cord, which is a continuation of this here, the, the brainstem. So the function of the spinal cord is to transmit messages between the brain and the rest of the body. So myelopathy is a disruption of the flow of those messages between the brain um, and the body. So if that disruption is in the cervical spine, the neck area of um, the spine cord, um, patients can often get dysfunction of the use of the upper limbs, the arms, as well as the legs. So it often presents with difficulty or worsening in the fine motor skills of your hands, um, as well as a change in your gait or loss of balance in your lower limbs. So typically patients might notice a gradual worsening of their ability to button up a shirt or a blouse, um, to use cutlery, handwriting can change, the use of a pencil or writing just becomes more and more difficult, or fumbling with your keys to try and find the right uh, key. And as it progresses, patients start to notice their hands and upper limbs starts to get uh, weaker and weaker. The ability to just grab and hold on to something that's of any significant weight starts to get worse. And then it also progresses in the legs as well. The walking starts to get difficult, your balance starts to get impaired. And then eventually as it worsens, you lose strength in the legs. Um, so difficulty climbing upstairs, lifting that body weight of yours upstairs, or even being able to stand. So we break it down, if we go back to the MRI scan, to things outside of the spinal cord, compressing it and therefore slowing down those messages. That's probably the common, the commonest causes. Um, to problems inside the spinal cord, abnormalities inside the cord uh, that can also cause it. So between each of these bones, we've got these cushions here called discs. The little shock absorbers between the bone that also allow a small amount of movement between each segment. <clears throat> and these discs can wear and tear over the years, and that's quite quite a normal part of being human. However, sometimes that wear and tear can be a bit excessive. Some of that disc starts to herniate out, so it bulges out. Um, and again, and again, the adjacent bone here starts to form a bit of a knuckle. And then over time, you get this gradual uh, compression of the spinal cord um, from this disc, um, slowing down those messages, causing those symptoms. Whilst the concept of bad posture has been challenged and almost refuted for lower lumbar back pain, in the neck it is very different. It has been shown that this is generally caused or seen more in patients who do sedentary jobs, who stare down at a keyboard or even a mobile phone for a prolonged period of time. Um, the, neck, the neck wears and starts to cause these problems. As we get older, you can get similar problems at the back of the spine. I've done a previous video on spinal stenosis. That can also happen up in the neck area where the tissues and the ligaments at the back through wear and tear start to form a callus almost. They thicken up and also start to compress the spinal cord at the back. So as you may know from watching other videos of mine, I work with osteopaths, physiotherapists, um, chiropractors and form the spine MDT to try and bring all these skill sets together to find less invasive options for treating different spinal conditions. However, in the context of cervical myelopathy and most spine conditions, that the, the aim of treatment is to preserve as much as your, of your neurological function, the function of your spinal cord as possible and often uh, surgery is indicated quite early. So if your function is worsening as a result of a disc herniation as shown, a typical operation I would do is called an anterior cervical discectomy infusion, where we go in, remove this disc 
um, to free up the spinal cord completely. And in its place, we put one of these cages in, which allows the bone above and the bone below to fuse and stabilize the segment. And there's a couple of links for that procedure below. Again, outside of the spinal cord, other causes such as fractures, which can be secondary to trauma, or even tumours that cause collapse of the bone and it bulging out, like in this patient here, um, which can put the spinal cord under threat, are treated through a similar operation. Um, so in this patient, this bit of bone here um, was completely removed. And here on the right, we see the post-operative x-ray where in its place, a special type of jack, also called a cage made of titanium, is put in to re-expand that space. And as you can see, the spinal canal here is nice and open and wide. And this is also you know, screwed in with a plate to secure it. And again, it's got a channel in the middle with some bone graft, allowing these two bones to fuse over time and stabilize. I've done a separate video on tumors of the spine. There's a link to that below. Um, where we do get some tumours, mostly benign, that arise from inside of the spinal canal. So this is a cross-section um, across the spine. This is the front here, this is the back. That's the spinous process, so the skin of the back of your neck will be here. And then they can arise from either the lining of the spinal canal, called the dura, or sometimes from, from the nerve itself. And then as they grow, they indent and compress the spinal cord. And often that does need surgery to remove it, where you usually come in from the back, remove all of or part of this arch, open the lining, resect the tumour itself, um, and then close everything up. Um, sometimes these tumours can rise from inside the spinal cord itself, again, mostly benign ones. They are trickier operations with a bit more risk. Um, but again, a similar procedure where you, remove, you come in from the back of the neck, remove the arch, and then remove part of that tumor, uh, remove as much of that tumor as possible. We do these operations with spinal monitoring, so um, we can stimulate the brain and the nerves of your arms and legs, monitor those signals as we're doing the operation to ensure that we're not causing um, any harm. And then there are other conditions where you get abnormalities within the spinal cord itself. Um, so plaques or inflammatory lesions, for example, um, seen in conditions such as MS, multiple sclerosis. These conditions are managed under neurologists, not neurosurgeons, and I work with uh, many such specialists. Um, but often the symptoms can be very similar and can mimic each other. As a general principle of medicine, the diagnosis should be made from a thorough history and examination findings. However, the investigation of choice to confirm the diagnosis is usually an MRI scan. It can give us quite detailed views of the spine, the spinal cord, where we can see if there's disc herniation compressing the spinal cord, anything at the back of the spine compressing it, tumours within the spinal canal, or even plaques or inflammatory lesions, or even tumours within the spinal cord. Hope you found this video helpful. If so, please don't forget to click like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps people suffering with back pain or any spine disease um, find useful information that I try and post on this channel every week. Please visit us at spinemdt.com to see how we can help you either in person or remotely.